to show you guys. I'm changing the fuel filter on the LVZ here. Oh, I'm sure that wind noise is wonderful. Um, just, you know, a little ha helpful tip. So you got our vice locks on, or vice grips on there, and then you got a fuel filter wrench. And that's all I did. I mean, I know, I know Dad's had some real trouble getting that off in the past, um, but uh, I just wanted to give you, because this, this is already loose, and it worked absolutely flawlessly. It's locked on there. Uh, it's locked on there pretty tight. And, uh, and here we are with a fuel fil er, filter wrench, and let's get that whiff sensor off. Just easy peasy. Uh, works for me. Um, just figured I'd give you guys just a little, little hint, because I know... It could probably be a pain in the butt if you hadn't thought of this already. So I'm putting the uh, factory filter on. Uh, so not bad though, not bad at all. I'm just putting some other things in. I have the lower radiator pipe O-ring. Uh, the factory one is right here. This might look a little big, and it's because it is. I mean, my goodness, it is swollen. And it was just coated in grease, like uh, axle grease or something. It was really weird. Um, I know someone might say engine oil. And uh, the way this coolant bottle looks, that might have been a possibility at one point with the head gaskets and soot and everything. But, uh, man, that's nasty. I have my boost leak tester. When I tested, this was my only little leak. Um, I just had to tighten down those two clamps there for the the pipe. So, just that little guy. I also put some thread uh, thread sealant around there. Uh, so, handy dandy guy there. Um, and I cheated and I put some of that on that this coolant pipe right here. Uh, that O-ring was leaking as well. Let me grab my flashlights in here. Oh, yeah. You can see the coolant around there, and that's not from that's not from pulling the, that pipe out of there. It didn't even drip when I pulled it out of there. Um, that's just from it leaking. So I threw some pipe sealant around that with a new O-ring. Uh, it's probably not the right size O-ring because it's a Harbor Freight freaking kit, and you can't you can't get what you need out of Harbor Freight junk. So you know, which is right here. So if you guys are wondering about that. You know, is this a good, a good kit? Yeah, I mean, it looks like it. Like, frick, yeah, look at all those. Um, I need a whole lot. I need a really thick one for that. Um, probably something about that thick. I put this one in there, which is that. But I'm thinking that thickness would be nice. Um, but, you know... And, you know, as I was just about to clip this together, this tab broke off. I was like, oh, yeah, that's about Harbor Freight quality right there. And it's, you know, their frickin' clamps speak volumes, too, about their frickin' quality. You know, oh, it's, it's just absolute junk. Absolute junk. Yeah, I, you know, these clamps may do the job to an extent, but my goodness, I mean... You get a good quality clamp, and you don't have to use a screwdriver necessarily. Well, actually, you can use a screwdriver, but you don't have to use a socket to tighten them down because the screwdriver, it's so tight, you can't tighten it down with a screwdriver. Um, and that's the nice thing about quality clamps, which these are not. These ones, you need a freaking socket to crank them down because the screwdriver is just, you can't get enough leverage to crank it down. And when you do start getting it nice and tight and snug and everything, well, then it strips out the freaking little gear or whatever. That's like, well, there goes that quality junk. So, I'm so, I'm, I'm done with Harbor Freight junk. I mean, I've got quite a bit of Harbor Freight tools in here, and I am just absolutely fed up with it. Absolutely. I, I, never again. So anybody's like, oh, Harbor Freight, man, they're sweet. They're, oh, man. I'm like, you know, it's cheap shit. Yeah, it may get the job done once, if you're lucky. And I don't 
care how many people will rag on me for, oh, I use hardware for eight tools day in, day out, never had a problem, blah, blah, blah. Well, you can, you can keep it because it's cheap shit that it's got a lifetime warranty for a reason because it's got to keep getting exchanged out, you know, once every month. I mean, just junk. You may have seen my seat sitting here. And, uh, well, I'll show you guys, uh, show you guys why probably tomorrow. But, uh, I mean, this, this is the, one of the main reasons, I guess. I mean, I didn't do that. The previous owner did that, so, yeah, that probably makes it a little ineffective. And I know some of you might think this is a little gay, but you know what? I think these things are just comfortable as all can be, so, you can blow me. But, uh, the other ones, I'll show you what they have. So, just my little two cents on Harbor Freight junk. And, uh, and what I'm doing to the LBZ at the moment. Uh, and I was going to get a power steering gearbox for it. That's not happening right now. Just, and it all comes down to they want a $250 core charge. I just can't swing that on top of the gearbox. I just can't. So I don't even know if I can swing the gearbox at this at this point. So I'm thinking maybe around the end of March we might be able to, but to work some figures around and see what'll happen there. But uh, I'm gonna have to try and source a new upper radiator hose because this one's just not right. It's kinked, and that's not good. So. But yeah, I would like to get new boots like that one and that that black one over there. That's just junk. I mean, that one's just all oily and it and it's you feel like it's ready to burst. But this one, uh, this one's starting to get that way too. So, but otherwise, the LBZ's been doing good. Um, I did have an issue, believe it or not. Uh, transmission started doing a stuck in tow haul mode and uh, when I uh, I couldn't figure out what it was because the light wasn't on on the dash and pushing the button would illuminate the light but nothing would change when you turned it off um, so that was just oh so wonderful um, and it came down to being um, no check engine light but I hooked my scan tool up, found some codes, fuel temperature sensor and coolant temperature sensor. Now the coolant temp sensor has already been changed and what had happened is I had the truck plugged in overnight and from what I've done some reading online, the LBZs with like the factory uh, program off the lot doesn't like to be plugged in the block heater for some reason. Um, the, the temps get all messed up, the, the readings, it just it's finicky. So. You could get them reflashed at the dealer, which I'm probably going to end up doing. Um, I'll get rid of the tunes from the guy, and I'll be able to load LBZ or uh, EFI Live in there. Uh, but yeah, that'll that'll cure it up. Uh, it's shifting good again. Once I cleared the codes, it's shifting like new again. Um, now that made me park this one because I was driving it. I had swapped my tires over and everything uh, from the other truck because these ones are just just junk in the snow. So. And of course, I have to swap tires, you know, 30 minutes before I before I have to be out the door. Figures. So, I'm out there, we'll rush to swap tires out in the snow with my bibs on and everything. Twice. The same exact situation. Half hour, i got to be out the door. Come on. So, but I didn't want to drive it around because I talked to Duramax Tuner and he, he was pretty confident it was a stuck valve body or something or stuck valve or solenoid. It turned out it was check codes with no check engine light. So if you got a tow haul mode stuck on, you might want to look at that first. Check engine light's not on, but clear codes anyway. So start there. And uh, otherwise they said fuel filter. Uh, whatever. I got a new fuel filter because this one's the fat one that came with the block and I just don't trust that. So alrighty.